What's up, people? Welcome to the session. I hope all of you guys are doing good, taking care of yourselves, having a fantastic day. My name is Anup, and this is your very own Vedantu ninth and tenth English channel. Again, a very warm welcome, people. I know your Sundays are right around the corner, and all you can think of right now is going and playing with your friends. But before you do, you have to earn it, right? So today we'll be doing the. fourth session sorry the third session of light where we will understand the basics of spherical mirrors which is by far very very important and the foundation to help you understand this entire chapter so for the next 20 minutes just give me 20 minutes of your time and we'll be done we'll go through the entire thing of spherical mirror what exactly is spherical mirror in the next couple of minutes and understand the whole process so are you guys ready for this are you So let's go people. Thanks a lot for joining. With that said, let us get into the understanding of spherical mirror. But before we get into that, I had actually asked you a homework question in the previous session. This was the question by the way, a fabulous question, and I saw a lot of answers in the comment section. The question is, an object is placed at a distance of 0.25 meters in front of a plane mirror. The distance between the object and the image will be what what will be the distance between the object and the image super easy question and i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys would have already done this so let me just change the camera angle over here a little so that you can see the answer for this so it's very simple guys imagine this is the object all right so this is the mirror all right this is the mirror okay there is an object kept right in front of it let's say it's a box all right and this box is at a distance of 0.25 meters where will the image be formed then in the chat box come on i know you all you know the answer what is it eh? exactly image will also be formed exactly at 0.25 meters why because it's a plane mirror so object distance and image distance will be exactly the same but the question is people what is the distance between the object and the image what is this distance is what the question is and that distance my friends is nothing but 0.25 plus 0.25 which makes it 0.5 meters All right. So here are the homework rockers for today. We have Sneha followed by Manlit and Michelle. Fantastic. That thanks a lot for all your compliments and fabulous job, guys. Fabulous job. Hats off to all of you. Be proud of your efforts because that is simply amazing. All right, guys. Now we'll get into the topic. What are spherical mirrors? And again, I'm going to explain the entire concept in the least amount of time, so it won't take much much time to explain this concept at all. Listen carefully, pay attention, and we'll be good to go. So, what are spherical mirrors? Now, to give you an example, guys, this is a spherical mirror. These that you see over here are spherical mirrors. But why are they called as spherical mirrors? Because if you look very carefully, if you just you know notice this very carefully, you can see that these mirrors are slightly curved. very very slightly you can't probably see this on the camera you can probably make it out just by looking at this so these mirrors are ever so slightly curved so why are they not called as curved mirror sir why spherical mirror the answer to that question people lies on the bigger picture this my friend is smile ji mr smiley mr smile kalis yeah ignore that now what i was trying to say is this people Imagine that this ball is a glass sphere, a completely transparent glass sphere. Now, here's the thing, guys. What I'm going to do is I'll take a small portion and cut this. I, I'm going to cut a small portion from this mirror. So what I'm going to do is basically, I am going to extract a small portion from this mirror, out of which I am getting. my curved mirrors let me repeat it one more time guys one of the best examples for a spherical mirror is nothing but your spoon because you have two curved surfaces here imagine that this was initially a part of the sphere in imagine that this handle is not there at all and this was initially like this so what i'm doing is that i'm cutting a small portion of this out of which i am getting this which is what is known as a spherical mirror now there are two types of spherical mirrors guys one is called as a concave mirror and the other is called as a convex mirror now what is the difference and why do you need to study about this a concave mirror is one which is basically curved inwards like if i talk about a spoon this surface that you see over here is curved inwards the side where you take the food from the one that you pick the food from that is a concave surface it's curved inwards so look at this again initially it was a part of the sphere 
I took it out and that's how I got this called as a concave mirror. Now here it's very slightly curved so you don't see that very evidently but nonetheless if you notice very carefully you can see that it's actually a good example of a concave mirror. A convex mirror on the other hand was also a part of the sphere itself but here when I cut this portion what I did was that I silvered the inner surface. Now, what do I mean by that? If you notice very carefully, guys, for a concave mirror, the front surface is reflecting, but the back surface, that is, if you talk about the spoon, this back surface is silvered. There's no reflection happening. That is why it is able to reflect the light from the front. For a convex mirror, on the other hand, if you look at it very carefully, for a convex mirror, it is reflecting from the outer surface. So the inner surface is basically silvered. So if I talk about this one, this is a convex mirror. If you can see this, again, it's so slightly curved that the inner surface, the inner surface, that is the side that you're taking the food from, that is silvered, whereas the outer surface is actually not. That is where the reflecting is, reflection is happening. So this is the major difference between a concave and a convex mirror. Now, why do you need to study about this? I'll give you that with a very simple explanation. Look at these two mirrors, guys. I want all of you guys to focus on the type of image. Now, you can probably see the camera. Right? you can probably see the camera but can you notice that the type of image formed in both of these are completely different that is exactly why you need to know and understand about these mirrors because these two types of mirrors gives you different kinds of images and that's what we're going to study in this chapter all right so with that said guys once again a concave mirror is one which is curved on the inside basically it's curved inwards reflecting surface is curved inwards outer surface is silvered like in this case like in this one yes and on the other hand if you talk about a convex mirror that is the one where the outer surface is the one reflecting the light and the inner surface is basically silvered all right so that is the difference between a concave mirror and a convex mirror unfortunately they have, there's a small typo error but that is a convex mirror all right guys now i want all of you guys to look at this image and tell me in the chat box right now and the comment section which type of mirror here is actually a concave mirror the mirror that is used by a dentist or the mirror that is used in your shopping malls and hospitals to see, to see what's right around the corner which of these here is actually a concave mirror let me know in the comment section and in the chat box right now let me see how many figures can get this right i want all of you guys to put it out in the comment section but with that said guys i'll tell you the answer of this in the next session i'm not going to tell it right now i'm not going to reveal it right now let that be a little secret between us with that said guys let's talk about the most important topic in today's session and that is my friends what are the components of a spherical mirror what are the different components of a spherical mirror now why do i need to know this let me answer that first the components of spherical mirror is important because if you don't understand this you will not be able to do the ray diagrams and if you can't do the ray diagrams the whole chapter becomes very 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 difficult so keeping that in mind guys let's talk about what are the different components of a spherical mirror let's start with the first one see guys i told you that a mirror both concave and convex were initially a part of the sphere now sphere is nothing but a three-dimensional circle isn't it it is nothing but a three-dimensional circle so the circle as you guys know has a center so sphere will also have a center so the center of the sphere is called as the center of curvature the center of the sphere the midpoint of the sphere that is called as the center of curvature now a circle also has something called as a radius, right? You might already know it also has something called as a radius. Radius is nothing but the distance from the center to the circumference of a circle, to any point on the circumference of a circle. That is nothing but the radius. Now, if it's a three-dimensional circle, won't this also have a radius? Absolutely, yes. And hence, you have the next component known as the radius of curvature. So difficult, no? If circle, sphere, that's all. Center of the circle, in center of the sphere is called as center of curvature. Center of a circle is called as just center. Radius of a circle is called as radius. Radius of a sphere is called as what? Radius of curvature. As simple as that. But we're not done yet, people. The third thing that you need to know is the center of the mirror. The midpoint of this mirror. Now, the mirror is also a geometric figure. The midpoint of the mirror is known as the 
पोल द मिड पॉइंट ऑफ द मिरर इज नोन एज अ पोल एंड द मिड पॉइंट ऑफ दिस मिरर बी इट कॉन्केव और कॉन्वेक्स इट डजेंट मैटर द मिड पॉइंट ऑफ एनी मिरर दैट इज कॉल्ड एज अ पोल अगेन वोट एवर टाइप ऑफ मिरर इट इज कॉन्केव और कॉन्वेक्स इट डजेंट मैटर इट्स कॉल्ड एज द पोल नाउ द नेक्स्ट कॉम्पोनेंट यू मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड इज द प्रिंसिपल एक्सिस नो वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज दिस प्रिंसिपल एक्सिस सी गाइज इमेजिन आई हैव अ मिरर इट्स अ कॉन्केव मिरर लेट्स ए ऑलराइट दिस इज अ पोल Pole is nothing but the midpoint of the mirror, right? Midpoint of the mirror. So if I talk about this, imagine this is a concave mirror. The midpoint of this that is called as a pole. Simple as that. Now, this is the center of curvature. Let's say, okay, right, this is the center of curvature. Initially, it was a part of the sphere. That is the center of curvature. A straight line that is passing through the center of curvature and the pole that is known as the principal axis. As simple as that. A straight imaginary line passing through both the center of curvature of the mirror and the pole of a mirror. That is what is known as the principal axis. As simple as that. It is that easy, people. It is that easy. Center of the mirror is called center of the sphere. It's called the center of curvature. The radius of the sphere, radius of curvature. The midpoint of the mirror is called as a pole, and a line passing through the center of curvature and the pole is called as what? the principal axis last but not the least people is nothing but the aperture aperture is nothing but see guys look at this for a second can you see that there is reflection happening from each and every corner from every single point there is reflection happening if i talk about this also you can see that reflection is happening from every single corner that is what is known as the aperture aperture is nothing but the entire reflecting surface For a second, I want all of you guys to imagine that this phone, the glass of this phone, is nothing but a plain mirror. So you can see that reflection is happening from every corner of this phone. Every corner that is called as the aperture. The entire reflecting surface is called as the aperture. So if you are standing in front of the plain mirror of your house, or though that is there in your room, the reflection is happening from every corner. That entire reflecting surface is called as what, my boys and girls? Aperture. That's all. Kale katham dukan band. That's it. This is all you need to remember, guys. This is all you need to remember. Center of curvature, center of the sphere. The radius of the sphere, radius of curvature. From the sphere, I got my mirror. The midpoint of the mirror is called as what? The pole. A straight line passing through the center of curvature and the pole is called as the principal axis. And last but not the least, the entire reflecting surface is known as the aperture. As simple as that. that is all guys that is all as promised in 20 minutes we are done but we are not done yet completely because i also have quizzes for you people just to check your level of understanding we'll do some quizzes as well but before we get into the quiz guys i have to talk about the most exciting thing that is out there that is the vedantus pro light courses guys because here is an opportunity for you guys to learn the entire syllabus in an amazing platform in an interactive platform in a platform where you have class teachers and master teachers who help you clear your doubts as well as help you understand the concept in an affordable in a damn damn affordable price and that my friends is the pro light courses so for cbse students who are currently in 10th standard who have moved from 9th to 10th this is the link for you guys you can see is avail all exciting vedanta courses if you go to this link this link will take you to vedanta's webpage where you can see that the entire course for the whole year is for just 4500 rupees no gimmicks no gst gst everything included for just 4500 rupees all six subjects physics chemistry bio math english social science all six subjects 400 plus hours of learning with midterm revision with tatva book which is a fabulous workbook for you guys we have the midterm revisions the end term revision we have tests assignments everything study material tests all of this for just 4500 rupees you will never ever find an offer like this ever again now here is the sad part guys we don't have much time because from this monday today is 21st from 23rd that is from monday the same course is going to be for 9000 rupees this was the launch price and now it's going to be back to its original price of 9000 rupees now my only question is this people why would you want to pay double the price 
for the same thing when you have an amazing deal to study with the best of the ma best master teachers and i mean it the best of the best master teachers you can see the testimonies of the students the testimonies of parents for such a low 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 affordable price just because the price is low does not mean the quality is in any way disrupted 20th june is the new batch date until then you will still be getting the recordings of the previous sessions absolutely no doubt about it live doubt solving by class teachers live quizzes live leaderboards and tests and assignments all of this for just 4500 rupees you can see everything about pro light courses over here the kind of teachers you'll be getting amrit sir you'll be getting amit sir aishwarya sir all of these amazing master teachers with 8 plus years of experience is what you're going to be getting uh, anuva ma'am again with about 6 plus years of experience these are the kind of fabulous teachers you'll be getting for your courses so all you have to do is guys click on buy now and the best part is you automatically 500 rupees discount has been applied so here you can see this ame pro is my coupon code automatically it's applied so all you have to do is click on the description of this video itself and 500 rupees off directly you'll be getting and the price comes down to 4500 rupees and on top of that you'll also be getting 250 rupees discount if you have other apps also all right all of this is what you're getting people fabulous deal but again the price sadly is going to come to an end because uh, it's going to be back to 9000 rupees soon before that happens guys i hope that all of you guys make the right choice and do what's right for yourself and for your family all right so that's it let's go on to the quiz questions now let's see how many of you guys have understood the concept and how many of you guys can answer it now let me know uh, you know in the chat box and in the comment section how many of you guys were able to answer all of the questions right all right so here's the first one what is the entire reflecting surface in a spherical mirror called as is it known as the aperture the pole the principal axis or none of these what is the entire reflecting surface of a spherical mirror known as aperture pole principal axis or none of these i'll start the quiz in 5 4 3 2 1 one let's go guys pause the video give the answer it's all right the answer in 3 2 1 one is nothing but aperture Aperture is nothing but the entire reflecting surface. The entire reflecting surface of mirror is known as the aperture. Next one, spherical mirrors with reflecting surface curved outwards is called as what? What is a spherical mirror with reflecting surface curved outwards known as? Options are concave, convex, plane, or curved. Super easy question again, people. I'll answer the question in three, two, one. Pause the video if you have to. I'll tell you the answer in three to one. It is nothing but a convex mirror, one which is curved outwards, where the reflecting surface is curved outwards and the inner surface is silvered. That is known as a convex mirror. Third one: spherical mirrors are part of what? Was are they a part of a rectangle? Are they a part of a cube? Are they part of a sphere? Or are they part of a pentagon? You know the pentagon, like in the US, yeah, like that. Hmm? What do you think? All spherical mirrors are made in the pentagon and they give it out so they can surveil you. What do you think? Huh? The answer in three, two, one is nothing but I'm pretty sure you already know this, people. Mr. Smile Ubai, Smile Al Khalifa. It's nothing but spear, right? Next one. The imaginary line passing through the center of curvature and the pole of a spherical mirror is called as what? The imaginary line passing through the center of curvature and the pole is known as a principal axis. The center of curvature, radius of curvature, or the pole. What is this line called as? Super easy question again. I'll tell you the answer in three, two, one. principal axis yes guys the line passing through the center of curvature and the pole is called as the principal axis now we are not done yet people because i also have a homework question put down in the comment section so i can put up your name in the next one the question is a dentist uses a small dental mirror to help you magnify teeth in your mouth you can probably see that the picture was previously shown right the tiny little cornea uh, the you know circular mirror what type of mirror is that let me know the answer for this in the comment section let's see who are the homework rockers in the next one all right so until the next time we meet people that's all for today thank you for joining have a fabulous day ahead have a fantastic weekend catch you guys later take care until then this is anup signing off adios kanishiva arigato take care